Well, summer's going to full blast. It's got to be 120 degrees in here. It's hot. But I want to show you guys real quick something I've been working on for the last couple of days. It's not finished, but I got to the point where I can fire this thing up. So I wanted a convenient engine run stand. Something not huge. I used Dallas. I borrowed Dallas's last year. And he's got a full-on run stand where you can bolt any engine to it. And it's got a cooling system. And it's really nice. But it takes up a lot of space. It's very cattywamp. It's not easy to move around. So I says, you know, I want to build something, but I want, I want something that's much smaller, easier to move, you know, easier to deal with. I can just roll out of the way when I'm not using it. So I built this one out of an engine cradle. So you can get these things cheap. They make them for all of the popular engines. The Summit's got them. Jags has got them. But these roll around engine cradles, they're made out of mild steel, one inch box tubing. And uh, they're configured to mount each of the different types of engines. This one here is for a big block Chrysler. I, I have no idea where it came from. It just showed up here one day. So thanks to whoever dropped this thing off. But um, I figured, well, let me finally put it to use. So I mounted our 361 to it. And I built this, I guess, uh, maybe six months ago or so to use in our mule car. And that's where it'll, it'll eventually end up. But for right now, it's going to be a mule for carburetors. And that's really why I, the main reason I wanted to set this up. So that if I want to screw around with a carburetor or I have an issue, I can bolt on an engine real quick and have everything open and accessible and I can monitor changes. So I say it's not finished yet. Uh, two things are missing on this. The first is I'm not going to mount a radiator to it, but I am going to take that water pump housing and fit it so that I can, I can use a water hose, just plug a garden hose into it and feed water to the engine that way. But for right now, we're not, that's not necessary. And then the other big thing is, right now, all I have is a dummy transmission on here. So this housing, this case, is only bolted here now to mount the starter. And I've got a manual transmission flywheel bolted to the crank on this. Um, but the next phase for this is to mount a full transmission. And I'm going to use this one, but I have an issue. What we're going to do is we're going to lock this thing in park. And well, just for future reference, don't ever get into a debate with somebody like John Cope about transmissions, because he'll always be right. I told him, yeah, well, I'll just jam the park rod in there and then leave it disconnected from the valve body so this way the train will be locked in park and I can work the engine against the converter. He says it don't work that way. And I went back and forth with him. He's right. It don't work that way. So I need to figure out some way to lock the parking pole into the output shaft on the transmission and then bolt that to the back of our deal. So this way I can play with torque converters. I can play with engine response against the converter. So that's the next phase. But I'm ready to start this thing. Um, let's see. And also, I still have to make like a nice, uh, like a control panel, something with switches. You know what I mean? On off switch and, and uh, mount my oil pressure gauge, a temperature gauge, and uh, make that nice and neat. So lots of little things to do to it. But I'm anxious to hear this engine light. It's been sitting on the stand just collecting dust. So let's see what it's going to do. And this carburetor, this had an issue, something in the, in the idle circuit. It wasn't idling right. It's been sitting around for a long time now, so I forget exactly what was wrong with it. But I'm sure it'll work for this. So let's see. Oh, here. Come around here. We've got... Uh, Aluminum canister, this, this is actually a fuel tank off an old drag bike. So we've got a fuel shut off here and the engine has a mechanical fuel pump. So it's all pretty much self-contained right there. So I already threw some gas in this thing and I don't have a starter button hooked up yet. So I've got to trip it out with the screwdriver. And I don't have ignition wired up yet. So we're going to use this jumper lead. Closer. Okay. 
All right. Here goes nothing. Get some gas on the float ball. That's not bad. That's not bad for a first start. There's no accelerator pump. Nothing. It's just a little. You see there? So let's just give it a squirt. Okay, I didn't put enough gas in the tank. Hang on for a minute, let me get some more gas in here. It's not the kind of mistake you want to make during a camshaft break-in for sure, but luckily the cam on this thing is already well broken in. It's already been in a few different engines. Sounds good. It sounds good. But obviously, it won't idle, and I've got no accelerator pump really. So, and we got a leak here. We got a nice, nice leak out of the bowl. So, carburetor is going to need a lot of work. But our motor sounds good, runs good. You know, this is like the perfect man cave accessory, right? Uh, so, that's it. Like I said, I just wanted to show you guys what I was working on real quick. And uh, total, my total investment is obviously I had a lot of stuff laying around, but my total investment in this is like less than a hundred bucks. And you could you could buy one of these dollies; they're listed for like forty nine dollars on uh, on Jags. I saw them, so uh, you know, plus shipping, of course. But yeah, it's perfect, nice little all around setup for testing anything you need to test. I'll see you tomorrow.